Fabrizio Romano has today, early this morning, informed that informed us that Mikel Arteta and Arsenal are confident of Modric's transfer to happen as soon as possible. So this is a story that is going to give Arsenal fans a lot of life and hope as far as Mokalo Modric's transfer to Arsenal is concerned. After that, we are going to let you know about Winfred Zaha, one of the people or one of the some of Arsenal fans were insinuating that maybe his contract is going to run down and they would like he his contract is going to run down in the summer and Arsenal would like to pursue him on a cheap in the January transfer window to come out and bluster their front three. That has really been turned down by David Austin, who is really one of the top transfer journalists coming in from UK and obviously working for The Athletic. And we have a story coming in from Italy being reported by Fabrizio Romano. Two players one who has been linked to Arsenal for a very long time and one who really said that he enjoys to play for Arsenal. That is Rafael Yao and Benanka have been really in talks with AC Milan and one of those is nearing signing a new contract with AC Milan. Meaning that his connections to Arsenal all link up to Arsenal and really moving to Arsenal is really impossible in the January transfer window. Welcome to Rokani Media Football. How are you guys? And where are you watching us from? First TV of the day, smash the like button, comment and share. And if you're totally watching us for the very first time, endeavor to go into the lower right bottom corner, smash the black button after smashing it. Smash the black button that has what a subscriber smashing it, hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified every time I upload a video onto this channel. Now, you know we are left with like 200 300 subscribers to hit to hit to hit 10000 subscribers so guys continue to subscribe and let's see this video being liked um 10 times today Fabrizio Romano has gone ahead to really let us know about the latest about Mokalo Modric to Arsenal and he said of course Arsenal are confident at Eta 2 but reaching an agreement with Shakhtar is crucial they were so strong in negotiations also in August when they turned down 30 million euros from Everton when it sounded like a great bid. So as things stand, the only hinge is all about reaching an agreement with Shakhtar. That's it. That's the only crucial moment or condition in between these two teams. But without that, Arsenal looks like they're nearing an age. But what we want to focus on is the word confident that Fabrizio Romano has come out to really use that Arsenal and Ateta are confident to get this deal done for Mokalo Modric from Shakhtar to Arsenal. Now, confidence is brought up by very many things. One of the reasons as to why these two parties are confident for this deal is the undying public love that Mokalo Modric has gone out on several occasions to expose that he wants to go on and join Arsenal. That is unmatched. Chelsea tried to go out and convince the family of Modric and the people around him, bribe them with money to see to it that they convince the player to change his mind to join Chelsea. The player said, no, I want Arsenal. I want Arsenal and I don't want you. So that is the first sign or the first step that is really building the confidentiality of Arsenal and Ateta on really materializing the deal of Modric to Arsenal. The second biggest point that most people have not even given a thought is really that Arsenal know the amount of money that Shakhtar really want. Trust me, however much Shakhtar is going out in the news to put out 100 million euros, they've told Arsenal the max or the minimum amount of money they should pay for this deal. So that's why Arsenal and Mikel Arteta are confident. And if at all they are not confident, they would have gone in for another immediate signing to go in and really replace this guy because Arsenal really has lots of players they've been scouting in the previous two, three seasons ever since, ever since uh, Edu became the new sports director of Arsenal. They've been scouting very many players and on their ladder they are having very many players that are in and out of the in and out of Europe. So I believe what is making them confident is simple. They hundred percent know what it's all about. The amount of money that is needed, Arsenal know it. And that is keeping them in a better position to really get this deal done and dusted. And I know that's the confidence that Fabrizio Romano was talking about because 
there must be something hidden that is really making them confident. Apart from the player wanting to go all out and join Arsenal, that is not enough. To me, that only is not enough to really give Arsenal confidence. Arsenal know that we can meet the amount of money that Shakhtar is calling for. And trust me, I told you Arsenal have the money. They have the money. They had £200 million to spend in the summer. They spent £121 million. They have a balance of close to £80 million. Now, they sold some players. Gwendozi. Um, they sold Gwendozi. They sold Bernard Leno. They sold uh, this other player to Galatasaray <laughs> in, in Turkey. Torreira. So they sold those three players and I think they collected close to 30 million euros from those three deals. So they have money with them to spend, but they are trying to test the waters and see, should we go all out and do ABCD? That's the most important thing. So that is it that Fabricius told us about Mukalo Modric. And second and thirdly, the confidence is really too much for Arsenal for this deal because Ateta came out in the story that I did, I think the last story I did yesterday, confirming to us that they will go for a player who wants to come and play for them, and a player will always go to where he wants to play. You get, depending on how desperate the player is, but I believe Modric believes that his career is in safe hands if at all he goes to Arsenal. And when you look at the way Chelsea is performing, there is no way that will really, there is no way that will really accelerate a deal of Mokalo Modric to Chelsea. Because they are really performing horribly. Even yesterday, they were smacked by Chelsea. Sorry, by Athlete, by Man City. 4-0 at Etihad. That is really very shaming. And I looked at a player known as Fofana who came in through on the bench, touching his cheek in disbelief. Oh my God. He was asking himself, did I really make the right move? And obviously, that is what Chelsea is all about. And Fabricio concluded the story about Mudrick by saying, no deadlines have been mentioned in the negotiations. As of now, talks continue. So, there are no deadlines on the deal of Mudrick to Arsenal. <coughs> That's it. There are no deadlines. And expect more and more and more to go on to Mushroom in the next one or two days because Arsenal are really pushing hard to get this player in because they feel like He's a perfect profile that is missing in the jigs of Mikel Arteta to make it complete. And secondly, he ticks all the boxes of a player that Mikel Arteta wants and the board really feels like it would be a very huge miss if at all they miss out on a player known as Mukalo Modric. So that is it concerning Mukalo Modric today. And I think you've known why Arsenal and Arteta are really confident. I've given you my three reasons and I think you can add me more if at all you know you know, if at all you have more in your know, in your brain that I've not really mentioned about because sharing sharing is good because everyone is entitled to his own opinion and we all have different brains that think at different wavelengths. Now, after that, there is a player known as Ismail Benanka. This player was at Arsenal. You get? Even when Mikel Arteta was there, this player was there. When Mikel Arteta was there as a player and as an winger, this player was there. He has been linked to Arsenal on several occasions. Even in the summer, he was linked to Arsenal as one of the midfield solutions that Mikel Arteta and Edu were looking at. Now, even in the games that Arsenal played in the winter, into the warm weather training camp in Dubai against AC Milan, after that game, Mikel Arteta had a word with this player and people insinuated that maybe he was telling him that please think of coming back home. But as Arsenal were really trying to capitalize onto a deal of this guy because he was just going to run his contract down in the summer, AC Milan have gone ahead to really say, no, we can't lose out a player like Isma Benanka. We remember what happened to Frank Kessi. He left out on a free to Barcelona. It was worth close to 50 million euros and we lost him on a free. So they've gone ahead to do the needful and really do the following as Fabrizio Roman has told us that Ismail Benanka will sign a new contract with AC Milan next week. Deal valid until 2027. Salary close to 4 million euros net per year. Benanka only wanted to stay. AC Milan release close will remain at 50 million euros for Ismail Benanka. Meaning that they've not really closed down any exit, any exit door of this guy. 
if Arsenal wants him, if any team wants him, they should go all out and cough 50 million euros for this player. So looks like Benanka is really being tied down on a long contract at AC Milan for the next five years until 2027. But he's really a very good player who plays in that midfield with Tinali in there at AC Milan in Italy. Now, after that, after, after that deal of a man known as of Nona Ismail Belanka, they've also gone ahead to do the needful and really focus on the deal of a player who came out official and said that he would love to play in the Premier League and the team would love to play for his Arsenal, that is Rafael Yao, and the former Arsenal player known as Olivia Giroud. They are focusing on these two contracts after the Ismo Benanka deal getting done and dusted. Five years, he's going to put pay into paper onto that. So Fabrizio Romano told us that S. Milan will now focus on Rafael Yao and Giroud contract extensions after Ismail Benanka. Talks are already ongoing with both of them. Benanka will sign within the next 48 hours new long-term contract until 2027 release close of 50 million euros will only be valid in 2024 meaning that he has to play one more season one more season and then his contract will have the right to be triggered or that close of 50 million euros will have the right to be triggered in 2024 so that's what fabricio told us about these players coming in from italy that is rafael yao all connected to Arsenal because Rafael Yao came out and said, I want to go to Arsenal. I would love to go and play in the Premier League and play for a team called Arsenal. That's what Rafael Yao came out and really told us openly on an interview when he was really talking to was it a radio station coming in from Angola down in Africa. So <clears throat> that is Benanka, Giru, and Rafael Yao for you. But I believe among us, all those players, I think Rafael Yao would be a very perfect fit. But if Arsenal managed to bring in Mukalo Modric, then Rafael Yao will be nowhere near them playing. Will be, will be nowhere near signing for Arsenal because Rafael Yao could be gotten at like 30 million euros in this January transfer window because his contract, because he's going to be left with just one year on his contract. 30, 50 million euros. And if at all Arsenal were fancying to bring Rafael Yao ahead of Modric, they would have gone ahead and really did that. But... I believe that's not the plan of Mikel Ateta. Ateta wants Mukalo Modric, seeing him as a perfect fit for his team as a manager. And Ateta has gone ahead to really <coughs> exonerate himself in these signings because the only signing that he has brought in through that has never really worked out like a charm is William. And I believe it was not his thought to bring in William. It was a thought of a do. To bring in William to save money because they needed to build a squad and there was a there was a player free his contract had really his his contract had gone out done had become outdone at Chelsea he couldn't go he couldn't really sign with Chelsea and Arsenal signed him they gave him a very huge salary but they are really saving some huge amount of money and after one year after flopping they terminated the contract under mutual terms and he left for Brazil, though he has now returned to the Premier League and is playing for Fulham and playing very, very well. So that is a deal of Mikel Ateta and um, Mikel Ateta and um, Mikel Ateta and Edu that really went sour. But the rest of the deals are really doing well. Come on, tell me that. What of Pablo Mari? For Pablo Mari, however much it never really came to mushrooming to the levels you want, Arsenal wanted. They are going to get some good money out of him and they're going to make some good profit of like 3 million euros from the deal. So I think that's also good business. Getting in a player, putting him at Arsenal, put him in the spotlight, loan him out. When you loan him out, he performs very well and you sell him and make profit. That's another way of doing business. Now, after that story, there is a player that has been linked to Arsenal for a very long period of time. That is Winfred Zaha. Ever since Unai Emil was at Arsenal every summer, this, this Winfred Zaha guy has always been linked to Arsenal. And he said that he talked to Unai Emil and Unai Emil talked to him, but obviously he was sacked. Maybe in that January transfer window of 2020, you would have found out that Arsenal was going to sign Winfred Zaha. But this is an exclusive coming in from David Austin, a football correspondent for The Athletic. He has told us that Winfred Zaha not leaving Crystal Palace in January. The 30-year-old winger fully committed to completing contract and helping Crystal Palace until the end of the season. 
Ivory Coast International will decide in the summer whether he signs a new deal or moves out as a free agent. Now, they have always been diverging, diverging communications from different points that he has another extra year on his contract to be triggered. But this time round, David Austin has confirmed to us that it's out. It's not there. Don't expect it. This player is running down his contract in the summer. And I believe he's going to run it down. After running it down, he would love to go all out and really play for a team that he really loves. And I think him on a free is going to get in a huge sign-on fee, a huge salary. And if Crystal Palace are to keep the player, I believe they're supposed to go in and really break the bank to give him a reasonable not even a reasonable, but a ridiculous amount of money per week that would go to close to £200,000 a week. Because if at all is going to be a free agent, teams like Newcastle, Tottenham Hotspur, you never know even Arsenal can come in through because they'll be playing the Champions League. Um, you'll find out teams like Liverpool and teams outside the Premier League will go in for him because he's really a good player that has gone ahead to show his consistency for the previous... How many seasons? Six, seven seasons, according to me, because he was let go from Manchester United by Louis van Gaal. He was loaned to Crystal Palace, and then they sold him there. And that means United is going to miss out on some other money, as they did on Memphis Depay. Reason being, they had everything of... They had a 25% 20, a resale fee. If at all this player is sold now, if at all the contract has gotten done, that means they're not going to get that amount of money. Like for Memphis Depay, they're supposed to get 25% if at all is sold to Barcelona and Lyon didn't sell the player. Obviously, United got nothing. So this man known as Winfred Zaha is really a free agent in the summer. And I think it will take more than even money for him to stay at Crystal Palace. Maybe Arsenal will have a chance to sign in another player on a free because right now there are two players that we know that Arsenal are interested in that are going to be free agents in the summer. One, Evan Indica, his contract is running out in the summer. Obviously, Frankfurt is outside there trying to really give him a new contract, but he's still trying to see whether he can sign a pre-contract with Arsenal. Then the other one is Yuri Tillemans, who has really said no to a contract being given to him by Leicester and he wants out, he will be a free agent in the summer. Now, there comes Winfred Zaha, a player that maybe Mikel Ata would love to sign. And if that happens that way, Arsenal would have gotten in three players in the summer on a free transfer. That will be a very huge blustering of their squad. Tiedemans, Indica, Winfred Zaha, they would have saved a lot and lot of money because for Indica, if he was tied on a contract, he would have gone like for 30 million euros. Then Tiedemans, he's worth 50 million euros. Okay, 60 million euros. That is like 80 million euros. For, for Unfred Zaha, he's worth like 50 or 40 million pounds. So it shows you that Arsenal would have saved close to 150 million pounds in getting those three players when you're free. And if at all it happens for Arsenal, it would have been a very good window for them because they wouldn't have spent a lot of money and the financial fair play rule will really be playing in their favor. Now, we all know that today, Arsenal is going to play against Oxford and Mikel Arteta has gone ahead to really have something to say about this game of Oxford. In his, in his own words, he said, it's always tricky. We've played there a few times and we have experienced very difficult matches. So it will be difficult. We have to take the competition and the opponent very seriously and play well to a high level to win the match. So he knows exactly what has happened because these teams have come out and knocked out teams like Aston Villa. You get Newcastle has been knocked out. You get so he knows how tricky it gets when you are at this level. But I don't see him really bring out his entire starting 11. That's it. However much is going to rest for those days, I think he's going to give them enough rest. As I brought you the match preview, I told you that I believe Michelata is going to go in for Matt Turner in goal, Tomiyasu right back, left back Ntieni, central defense Saliba and Rob Holding, midfield three of El Nini, Sambilo Konga and Fabio Vieira. Then Nketiah will lead the line, Emily Smith-Roy off the left, and Marquinhos off the right. 
that's the team I believe is going to go on to front. But I believe the likes of Thomas Pate, Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli, Gabriel Magales, Benny White, Zinchenko are going to be on the bench. That's it. So guys, thank you very much for watching in through. Tell me what you think about a team known as Asno and Ateta being confident of Mokalo Modric's deal. Then again, tell me what you think about Benanka and Rafael Yao new contracts being processed at AC Milan. That means Asno is going to miss out on these players because one in the names of Rafael Yao has publicly stated he wants to come and play for Asno. For Benanka, He's an ex Ghana, and Mikel Ateta is really an admirer of this player. So, what are your predictions again for Oxford versus Arsenal? The only FA game that is left to be played in the third round. And remember, a team that will go through is going to play Man City in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup. Rock and David is my name. I sign out for now. See you later. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I'm out. Bye bye. See you in our next video.